Hello and welcome to the Good Life Guys show podcast. I'm Yasin. I'm here with Stephen as always. And today I'm very excited because we have a guest, Charles Black, aka Don of Desire. Is it Don of Desire or the Don of Desire? Either. He was, he was good. Normally it's the Don Flexible. of Desire, but I don't mind either. I'm not. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I've listened to Charles's stuff on YouTube for a number of years. Um, and recently you were taken down can you tell us a little yeah. bit about that story yeah sure sure um i had things were going well um fine and the youtube channel was growing and then a month ago at the end of september i was i came home from a friend's house and i got a message on instagram from someone i didn't know like a message request and they said where are, where are your videos I can't find them. And it, but as soon as I saw that message, I had like this sinking feeling in my stomach. I was like, oh no. And um, I went to the channel and it was gone. And like it had been deleted. Um, I had no strikes on my channel before that. I had, had had a couple of strikes through the lifetime of the channel, but not in years. And um, especially not in the last 90 days, which is generally how they're. Um, uh, guidelines work mm. and uh, yeah it was gone i sent a re i sent a um a request for um someone to double check it and uh, an appeal and i sent the appeal and within 30 seconds of sending the appeal i got a message back saying we have manually reviewed this decision um and we've come to the conclusion that we are deleting your channel and yeah and they, they don't give a reason they it's, they keep it very gray on purpose um, mm. So I still don't really know what happened. But um, that's like getting yeah. ghosted. It's like it's, <laughs> I mean, you're in like a pretty serious, or were in a pretty serious relationship with YouTube, and then just all yeah. of a sudden. Um, and it's not like you, you're being quite humble. It's not like you had 200 followers. This is like no, you no, had 300 and. I think it was about 325,000 subscribers and it was something like 40 million views, yeah. something along those lines. Um, you know, yeah, it really sucks, man, because my channel was on um, sex education, mostly focusing on men and teaching them how to become better in the bedroom. And, you know, that is somewhat in the gray area of um, what, is and is not allowed within the YouTube community guidelines. Mm. And some people may have looked at my content and thought, okay, that's not appropriate for YouTube. And if that was the decision, you know, fair enough. But my um, videos had been manually reviewed multiple times because of the nature of what they were. And YouTube had always deemed they were within the community guidelines. Mm. And on top of that, there were other channels teaching uh, similar things to what I'm teaching. So it seems very arbitrary how it came to happen like this with no, you know, no, no, no feedback from them as yeah. to what the, the cause was. So yeah. do you have a, do you have a theory uh, in your mind as to what the reason may, may be or? Well, uh, yeah, I have a, a sort of uh, reason. Sneaking um, suspicion. What happened was, um, not long. So that, as I said, there are other people teaching um, similar stuff to what I teach on the channel, and I didn't really, I didn't know them personally. I hadn't never spoke to any of them. Um, but a few weeks after my channel went down, someone put up a video saying, um, "Has has Don of Desire uh, been censored?" Something along those lines. And she was another person teaching sex education stuff. And she was saying, this is not really fair, um, et cetera, et cetera. And she reached out and she uh, said, like, if you'd like to come on my channel and speak to me, uh, I would love that. I would That would be great. And we can see what we can do about your channel. I was like, oh, my, wow, this is amazing. Like, I didn't even know this person. I'm like a competitor of hers. So for her to reach out like that, that's really cool. And... Then I sent her an email, reached out to her, et cetera, et cetera. But then I went to her Instagram channel and she had these highlights of, um, do you know what the highlight, the story highlights are? Yeah, yeah. Like you make a story and you can save it. 
So mm-hmm. she had these highlights called, um, I can't remember what it was, it was called, like banning or restriction or something like that. And I clicked on it and it was a load of images of my, like screenshots of my channel tagging YouTube in it. Like YouTube, why are you allowing this to go on on YouTube? Mm-hmm. Tagging my Fuck. channel and saying, why is this allowed? And it turned out her friend had had a channel taken down and she felt my channel was more explicit than her friend. So then she'd contact YouTube say, why is this allowed? A few weeks after that, my channel was then taken down and then she reaches out to me to say, it's unfair that your channel was taken down. So it seemed like it, I mean, Fuck. I don't know it's, that that was it, but that aligns quite nicely with what happened. That's it's some, like she, somewhat Machiavellian, isn't it really? I mean, somewhat, <laughs> yeah. It's like she's <laughs> trying to yeah. piggyback yeah. on both ends. Uh, she's just you know, a bit of a, <laughs> of a psychopath. <laughs> ah. So, I mean, this is an interesting point and, I feel like some people, when when they hear me ask this question, are going to roll their eyes. Uh, but I think it's an important one to ask, and that's, do you think this would have happened? Well, I suppose you've actually answered the question, but my question was, do you think this would have happened if it was a woman teaching sex education? And I feel like the chances are much less likely, but apparently her friend... Likely. Yeah, her friend's channel got reinstated after uh, okay. as well. Yeah. So that her, they actually gave her friend her channel back. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I I've seen a lot of this kind of stuff online, and it it seems like much more celebrated, you know, when women talk about sex and yeah, n- not always, but now like discovering sexual pleasure, understanding how to give themselves pleasure and totally. give blowjobs and all of this stuff, and then it's like now seen as quite like nasty or gross if guys are like trying to get better in bed but particularly with your content it was always about giving more pleasure to women so i don't understand what the gripe is really um did you ever have many people contacting you like reaching out like your content's horrible <laughs> every You're now and then uh, n- never never through email um some some um some youtube comments but i would say it was overwhelmingly positive like yeah, 95% plus 99% positive comments. Um, to be fair, though, YouTube had shadow banned my channel um, to an extent about six months to a year before it was banned. Um, so that was interesting. And they never told me, they never messaged me to say anything like that. I could just, if you look at the channel analytics, um, you could see where your views are coming from. And I would make videos, um, say, let's just say how to lick pussy, for example. And I can see where they rank for those search terms. So I'm ranking number one for that. But my, so all my views are coming from people searching that turn and finding me at the top. But my suggestions, my pe- people watching me through the suggested part of uh, YouTube was zero. So even though my stuff did well with the YouTube algorithm, it was refused to recommend my channel um, just, to just, anyone else. Just to clarify for myself and uh, our listeners, yeah. shadow ban means like they don't ban you, but they they stop Stop-wheel. recommending you essentially. So yeah. they're like you're basically just getting seen by way less people. That's a shadow ban. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And yeah, you exactly. you don't actually you're never explicitly told i think that's part no, of the shadow no. part of it yeah like, exactly yeah um, i mean a lot of a lot of sex advice that's aimed at men um i'd say a lot of good and legit sex advice that's aimed at men tends to uh, imply and highlight um uh like polarization between mm. uh yeah polarization between the sexes and b- yeah. which basically implies that the sexes are different, different. on a fundamental level, right? And that yeah. message just isn't really a popular message with um, big chunks of the uh, mainstream that like to, you know, that maybe adhere to a more blank slate kind of uh, yeah, totally. notion of life, right? So, I mean, I would imagine that that kind of that, played an, yep. is an aspect of it, you know? Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean... Sex, sexual dynamics is about like the least politically correct thing you could ever talk about. And the better the advice you want to give in that area, 
the more politically incorrect you need to be. Yeah. The more you need to emphasize the difference between the average male and the average female mm -hmm. and their preferences and things like this, which is not, you know, <laughs> it's not in the window. It's not in the common narrative. Yeah. As you said. Yeah. Window, yeah. I think that's the, the expectation is unrealistic. And the expectation is that every time you give any advice, you will reiterate that it's the average man and the average yeah, woman yeah, for sure. like every yeah. sentence has to be stipended with that <laughs> yeah it's yeah. not possible like until recently we would assume we wouldn't say that every single woman is going to respond well to this and every single man like there's an there's an underlying assumption that we're allowing yeah, you know just a little bit of common but, sense but yeah, even yeah. if you did believe that you know it was actually pretty much across the board it was you know every single man and every single woman even that is just a theory right it's a thought it's a theory it's an idea a concept it's um it's just it's a, it's a perfectly legitimate thing to believe if you believe that so even if your advice or even if one's advice was uh to, to i don't know quote unquote extreme why is it not legit to put it out there because it's just an idea and right. it's not you know what i mean it's it's like it's even not, if you're wrong yes like what's right. wrong with putting an opinion out even if that opinion is wrong or a belief you know i mean that's the most dangerous right. aspect of it right that yeah 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 because all beliefs are essentially kind of subjective and not maybe entirely provable or falsifiable so why can't we all just put out all of the interesting concepts that are potentially interesting and true and then just kind of deal with them in the public square. I mean, that's what YouTube and, and Facebook and, and blah, blah, blah were, were supposed to be. That's why people were excited by them when they came out. But unfortunately, it's really not transpiring in that way. You would hope it would be that way. And, you know, you would hope that if it wasn't that way, at least they would be transparent in the decisions that they make and how they come to those. Mm decisions yeah. on and why they're doing what they're doing so that people know the rules that they're supposed to be playing by. Yeah. I mean, in a sense, you have to ask, like, who are you? And I don't mean you. I mean, the, the, the powers that be, the people who banned you. Who are you to say what I can and can't, what ideas I can and can't put forward? Especially when there are ideas like yours, which are so kind of harmless, you know, uh, and, and, um, potentially valid like anyone can see yeah. that those ideas are potentially valid yeah 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 it, yeah yeah it's, it's a tough one it's like ultimately they no, are um, just a company what were you gonna say charles i was just gonna say uh i don't know how where you are guys of um like jordan peterson and his discussion of like the problem with hate speech and having any sort of hate speech rules is who is going to define them. Mm. And the person who's going to define them is the person that you least want to define them. The person who's interested in defining those things, yeah. those things. And that is how it seems to fall. Yeah, you almost disqualify yourself from being the person that should be defining these things by wanting to be by wanting <laughs> yeah. to define them in the first place. Because you're obviously a bit yeah. busybody and you're obviously kind of hungry for control and power. And you know, yeah. The last person yeah. that should have the control and power. Yeah. But there's the, the the flip side of it is that there is a point at which we could almost all agree that hate speech shouldn't be allowed on these platforms. Um, it's just where we define it and where others define it might differ. Um, and yeah, they're, also... they're a company that has adverts at the start of videos uh, and their whole goal is to monetize the platform. So... I, th I think what's changed with YouTube is that they've become the bitch to advertisers. Whereas yeah. there was the boycott. I don't know if you remember that, where a flood of, like Coca-Cola and a bunch of other advertisers yeah. left the the platform. I think just temporarily, but because there was like, was it a Nazi? I, don't, I can't remember what it was. I don't even think it was that bad. It was like it was like PewDiePie made. Ah, oh, was it that a, a, a Nazi joke or something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was. So it. He was joking, and yeah, yeah. Maybe it was funny. you could argue that he went too far, but like it was a joke. Yeah. Um, 
I feel like if something's a joke, then almost almost anything goes. You know, yeah. like yeah. I mean, I I I really I personally can't think of anything that doesn't go. But maybe you could make a case that some things don't go. But almost everything. I, goes. I remember. I think the argument against it was um, people were saying it was uh, dog whistle for um, for the alt right, or it was something along those lines. So that's how they catch you out in that sense. But the thing is, like, it being a dog whistle or not is itself just another belief or idea. So it's like, yeah, yeah. how can we compete in the world of ideas if some ideas are banned and others are empowered constantly? I mean, it's a completely unequal playing field. Yeah. yeah. But you don't think that at some point, and I, just to clarify, I don't think it's at the Dawn of Desire point, but much, 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 much further along. Um, but, you know, where... Not even PewDiePie stuff, but like where a guy is just sat on his channel like, I'm a Nazi, here are all the races I hate, here's I'm going to take them down. Like at that point, I feel like, okay, I'm with you, take down the channel. If but only they, for the, the saving advertisers. Um, so I think there is a line at which it makes sense to me. I just think that... You mean economically or like on a kind of a moral, on a deeper moral philosophical level? No, no, because level. I think on a moral philosophical level, uh, having ideas fester in the back of cupboards is the most dangerous place you can put them. Mm -hmm. Like the best place is to have the nutter, have a platform and everyone go, shut the fuck up. Uh, <laughs> rather than like, you know, on dark forums on the web, on the dark web, you know. It's on like, 4chan, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's not from that perspective. Uh, and it, and I think that's the illusion is that it's about morality. It's not. It's about money. And then for no. some people, it's about power. What is interesting, I think, is that YouTube does let things slide until until it cut until it gets highlighted by someone. Often they will let things slide. And, and that is why they um, intentionally keep their community guidelines great. And they can twist those guidelines in order to throw you off for close to anything and ah. and they will if you generate enough um uh negative press mm. they'll just wipe you out yeah yeah i know i don't know if you if you know anything about like um pickup artists and uh things like i was this. gonna say yeah yeah because there's like Pickup artists would sometimes do these things called infield, where they'll record themselves talking to a girl, and there will, um, and then they'll show the guys like, "This is why I did this. This is why I did this, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. And you can argue whether that is uh, unethical or creepy or whatever you want, but the, the the fact is that there are many channels that do that. But then every now and then, one of those channels will come into media highlight, and then as soon as that happens, that channel's gone. But they'll let it carry on over here. They just want to be seen to be uh, okay. taking action That's on that. Thing, yeah. That's really interesting. So it isn't the case that YouTube and maybe Twitter and stuff, but let's just stick with YouTube, have some overarching ideological bent. It's more that they just want to make money, right? Because they're a yeah. business, which is completely really fine. And so they just have to kind of, they, they'll do whatever it takes to have an easy life. And Basically, if somebody's going to go to they'll take them off. But they don't themselves care. Because sometimes when you watch, um, I listen to conversations about this sort of thing. I get the impression, I'm like, if, if it almost, I guess I just assume that YouTube itself has some sort of an agenda in terms of a, a political, um, ideological kind of outlook on life. Well, they certainly seem to um, state that they sort of have certain views and want to achieve that they believe in social justice and things like these. Um, but I think when you look at their practices and not listen to what they say, it seems they just try to limit the most extreme things and then pick things off as it suits them. The funny thing is, man, I know you're a victim of this, but I'm almost slightly relieved to hear that because I feel like the way it is, the way you're describing it sounds almost better than if the world's most powerful media platform 
right. um, had an ideological bent that it was trying to push. I feel like that would maybe be even more sinister than what's currently going on because what's currently going on is harmful to many people, but perhaps it's not as like overarchingly dark as if they were literally just trying to push an agenda because they li they literally do have the power to push a, an agenda and change minds. That is true, yeah. But, but I feel but like as a, as the platform that they are to benefit people like you and to benefit people like me who want to listen to people like you, um, it should just be almost entirely a free for all. You should yeah. just be allowed to say almost entirely whatever you want. Now, yes, and you're saying there might be areas that should be banned, but I think they should be like so far on the kind of out, like yeah. outside the open window or, or like on the absolute outskirts of like decency. But at the I, moment, I'm, they seem I'm, to be like very middle. A lot of very benign things are being banned. Yeah, I'm purely talking about from the perspective of if it was your company. Okay, not your company because you have different perspective. But most people running this company, if advertisers were like, look, we're fucking off because this doesn't align with what we want to sell. They're just going to listen to them. And like you're saying, Charles, that's why they'll profit on you, off you until such a point where people make noise and therefore they fear that advertisers will make noise. So right. they're completely unbiased until their financial gains cut, uh, you know, come under fire. Uh, and I think it's good, in, in like you were saying, Stephen, from one perspective, that they don't have a, a political leaning. Um, but, but then from the other perspective, and what it seems like happened to you, Charles, is that it allows people with nefarious intentions to just go, I want to do better than this person. So I'll just, you know, I'll complain. And then right. with with no recourse, your channel's taken down and that's the end of it. And yeah. a whole like, I mean, you seem quite dynamic and, and have an ability to pivot, but for most people, that would be the end. They'd have to do something else. That's, that's pretty fucked. Um, and I know people with much smaller channels who have had things like that happen where, I mean, we know someone who had their channel taken down who is a pickup artist. Um, what we was had it, over Infield or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, 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 over Infield. And then yeah. actually pickup artists all around the world have now, I mean, the biggest one, RSD, has taken down all that content. And now yeah. they're like self-help gurus. Yeah. Uh, and then I think it's pretty lame, but... Yeah, it's a shame. They helped a lot of guys. Yeah, so it, it, it's crazy how impactful this kind of stuff can be. And like we were saying on another episode, we were talking about the dark triad personality type and how mm -hmm. they they will just piggyback on whatever is easiest, the, the whatever the path of least resistance to success, fame, power is what they'll use. So there's all these people who have good intentions and just want equality and free speech and la 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 la. And then the, there's these other people who are like, okay, well, we're being a bit dumb about this, you know, like with the whole something like always believe a woman, that kind of thing. Right. Like that seems like a, a good thing to go by until you have people that manipulate the system massively and ruin people's lives. Um, and I think that's happening here where we're just believing the person who's accusatory. Uh, and then people like you are on the receiving end of that. Um, yeah, it really sucks that you did like the, the, I mean, this is like a personal gripe, but the, the most frustrating thing from my end is like, just there is no, there's zero communication, there's zero, um, and th there's zero path to redemption. Like, as far as they're concerned, I'm banned for life, no more channels. Um, I'm just not allowed on the platform anymore on my own channels. I can't own my own channels. Even if I go, even if I start making a, a channel about how to train puppies, like, it's just, it's crazy. And, um, and all of, and a lot of this banning and deplatforming, like if I am on the edge or if I am doing something they don't like, just, you know, three lines in an email, like, hey, this, this part you're not doing here, that's not cool, man. 
And I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm on your platform. If, if that's how it is, then that's how it is. But it's just nothing. Yeah. And that's, that's going away a bit from what we're talking about on the, uh, on how things should work, but it's just, I think, I think that's fair uh, as well. Uh, a fair request that they allow, they provide some lenience so that you can adjust. Yeah. And, uh, anything, man. It must yeah. be unbelievably like unbelievably frustrating to be somebody who's built a channel and then just have it like pulled from underneath them with no yeah. recourse. I mean, I can't really imagine many things that would be that like fucking, Ah, maddening yeah. and frustrating. It was just yeah. It was five years I built that channel, mm. so, and like, it was like twenty four seven. I was doing that. Yeah, I had a a channel that it was like for marketing. I did it a few years ago with a with with this guy that I'd hired, and um, basically we were cold calling businesses, and we were showing the the journey of us becoming like a marketing agency. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm like terrified of cold calling so i was like visibly shaking on these yeah, calls yeah. and, and you, like, were, put, you were documenting it yeah yeah yeah. so oh, like cool it for me it was like very personal like uh, to yeah. watch the journey and yeah. the, this guy went awol and uh got into the account and deleted it holy shit uh and i just received like a whatsapp voice note like oh thank you for everything i had to delete the channel because i i just can't do this and I don't want my name associated. And I yeah, so and it was like I'd say I had a hundred subscribers and it felt like my my life was coming to an end. So <laughs> I, I can appreciate the the pain. But I, I have to say it was extremely upsetting and um and uh yeah I mean I don't know what's gonna happen now. I really don't know. Like uh, I was, I was generate. Like if you're in a, if you're, if you're running a business, you need traffic. You need eyes to see what you're doing. And almost all the eyes on my business were coming from uh, people finding me through YouTube. So whether I will survive now, uh, we will see. Time will tell. But I, I will say that there is, honestly, some sort of even mild relief in the sense that I always knew that I wasn't liked by YouTube. They had done things over the time to sort of let me know that, and um, especially with the shadow banning. So I always had this uh, fear in the back of my mind that this might happen at any moment. Um, like, that's what I said when I saw the Instagram message from the guy, I was like, oh, I knew it would happen. But now that worst case scenario has happened. Mm. And and I'm 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 still alive, and as and, and and as horrible as it is, there is some relief in that at least. Mm -hmm. A lot of so, people who are like uh, who have YouTube channels that are you know center or slightly right of center, like Sargon of Akkad and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, they're like they really seem to believe that their days are numbered. So like right. he is constantly harping on about like you know get on parlor, get on mm -hmm. uh, bitch shoot because you yeah. know it, it could be any day. And any any little kind of sentence I say that's just not quite right, and that could be it. You know, I mean, the same thing happened to Stefan Molyneux. He was taken off with like. What was he taken off for, actually? I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not really sure. But I mean, he's got so much content that you can imagine was very unpopular with certain types of people. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what it was specifically that he was taken off for. I, th um, I think it was to do. Uh, he was doing a lot of content about. Um, George Floyd, and he mm. he seemed very doubtful that uh, that a knee on the throat would kill someone, and he mm, spoke about it a lot, a lot. Um, yeah, that could be it. Yeah, because yeah. he talks about stuff like that a lot. He's done a lot of videos on on similar types of like police um, related, you know, deaths and whatnot. Uh, but I suppose this was such a high profile one. It was such a a kind of a uh, I don't know, you know, important time. It's, a, I, I, it's such a shame. I have a lot of my friends kind of can't really stand Stefan Molyneux. But again, like he's a prime example of someone who's just putting forward really well thought out opinions. It doesn't matter if you don't agree with them. They're valid opinions. They're valid. Like he's what not just spouting mean? insanity. Valid means that he's arguing from a place of rationality and he genuinely believes what he's saying and he's thought about it and he'll be able to put forward an argument for why he believes what he believes. And if you don't agree with him, Fair enough, totally fine, but you're just going to have to either 
put up with not agreeing with him or just argue back if you feel you want to. But you can't just say, no, you're not allowed to speak because, I mean, you know, he's just putting forward, uh, he's putting forward concepts that he has, like, spent a lot of time trying to formulate. So that's what a valid, to me, that's a valid, uh, it's valid, that they're valid concepts sure. from that perspective. Sure. Yeah. I feel like last few years he was a bit of a nutter. Uh, and no, but yeah, but like, even, even if he was, it sort of comes back to what you were saying about the worst place to, yeah, even yeah, if yeah, he absolutely. was a nutter and those ideas are sort of not good at all, then the worst place to put them is in the dark, leave them agree. Where, where they're going to evolve in without any <laughs> public attention on them whatsoever. Yeah, but isn't it problematic to even label concepts as good or bad? Surely we should just be labeling them as more or less accurate. So if Stefan Molyneux is saying something, for example, that like makes your skin crawl a bit, and he says some things that some that make my skin crawl a bit and get me a bit pissed off sometimes, but that's just because I believe that that concept's like inaccurate, and maybe a part of me is triggered by it. But that's my problem. Like if I'm triggered by concept. It is entirely only my problem. I have to deal with that. A concept is cannot be good or bad. I, I would put that. But I would say there idea. is um, there, there are ideas. There are there could be even valid ideas that are <clears throat> dangerous ideas, and mm. people would argue that the people that are taking these people down would argue that it's better to silence these dangerous ideas but you've got to decide what is more dangerous to 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 spout the dangerous idea or to sent start censoring ideas and mm. that is the debate yeah 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 i mean it's a really good point you've made i i, I think there can be ideas that are accurate let's say but that are <laughs> that are dangerous and yeah. probably maybe society will be a safer place and a better place if those ideas aren't known widely or if those yeah. concepts, even if they're true, aren't really yeah. understood widely. Yeah, I, I, I accept that, yeah. I'm going to put on my light. Hold on. Talk so, about romantic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in, in terms of moving away from this, because, I mean, it sucks, but this, this is, you're more than... A deleted YouTube channel, and uh, <laughs> I. What interests me is how does someone go from? I assume you went to uni. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, you you're at uni, and then one day you're like, I'm so good at fucking. <laughs> I just <laughs> I need to let people know. Like, and how you know? Because I think most guys that I know think they're good at fucking. It's right, just like right. well, that is the problem. That is just, why yeah, I yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I, I used to, I used to teach pickup, right? Okay. And yeah, a lot of the people I would coach when I was first, like, man, you're terrible with girls. Like, let me help you. Yeah. They'd be like, now nah, I'm great. And I'd be like, when, when was the last time you were with a girl or had any interest from a girl? <laughs> yeah, like two years ago. It's fucking amazing. I'm like, two years. <laughs> so they like couldn't. There's this uh, cognitive dissonance between yeah. the world is telling me this thing, but I just can't believe it because of my ego. And I assume the same is true of of sex, right? Like, I, I don't know anyone, any guy who's ever been like, fuck, I'm so shit in bed. So <laughs> how did you know that, like, legitimately, this is what I should be pursuing as a career? Well, I was one of those people who was in denial of it who, who okay. until 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 reality hit me so hard that there was no way I could deny it any longer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what was that story? Tell us that story. But, but I was, when I was around 20 years old, I was, um, I wouldn't say engaged, but I was with a girl who I believed, even though I was young, I believed I was going to sort of marry her and have a family with her. And uh, I was very in love. And, but things weren't going so well. Things were going downhill. And especially our sex life. Um, it, it, it got to the point where it was evidently a, a chore for her every time it happened and, and, the, and the distance between it happening were getting longer and longer and the excuses were getting, she was putting less and less effort into the excuses yeah. of why she didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. And I was trying everything because I was 
young, naive, green, and, and desperate. And, yeah. you know, I, I didn't know what to do. I had never even, I'd never heard of pickup back then or anything like that. So I was um, taking her out to meals, trying to spoil her, you know, just all these basic things that a guy thinks that you should do. Mm. And none of it, none of it was helping. And um, so I saved up and then like, as a last, like, I'm going to fix this. I saved up and took her to an expensive hotel for a weekend. And like, I thought that would be this grand gesture would, um, would fix our problems. So we went to the, we went, we went away for the weekend. And um, at first she, it worked. Like she was ecstatic. She was uh, attracted. It felt like she was attracted to me again. And I was relieved and I felt okay. And like, she she like she, she was excited she even wanted to have sex with me that night which was like a first in a, in a long time and uh, but that night as soon as we started having sex that um excitement vanished almost instantly uh, and the longer it went the worse it was getting mm. whereas i'm just rooting away and just it, she's looking around bored yeah and then the most ridiculous thing absurd was that as that was happening in the room next door we hear these animalistic porn star screams yeah of the woman next door and uh <laughs> and uh yeah and it just like contrasted so hard with what was happening with us so, um, so did you continue or were you like no I let's just over. call she, it a she she made she she was like yeah this is done this is done at yeah, least she's yeah. having fun like and uh and then not long after that she broke up with me and it was awful like really awful um but it um put a, lit a fire under my ass and i was like i am never ever ever gonna let this happen to me ever again and so i just started reading like a madman I was getting, I was getting my hands on studies. I was reading every book on relationships and sex. I was uh, going to seminars, trying to speak to any expert that would speak to me. And uh, I started making some progress. And as I started making some progress uh, myself, I started giving out advice here and there to friends. And they were like, "Holy shit, man! This is uh, this is working. This is this is helping." So I, I used to be um, a poker player. That's how mm. I used to live. So I was just, uh, I was living in Budapest at the time and I was just helping my friends. And then my friends had clients. They used to run a uh, pickup company and um, I would give their clients advice when they came on the sexual topics. And then they were having great success with what I was teaching them. Uh, and then it grew from there. Then my friend was like, man, you've got to start a, a YouTube channel with this. And I was like, ah, I don't know, man. I, yeah, I was, I was like, I was playing poker. So, and he just kept on at me and I, and eventually I gave in and I was like, all right, I'll try it. And it was funny because when I first started, I don't know if you ever saw, I don't know what videos you saw of mine actually, if you, whether you saw the later ones or the early ones, but the early ones were absolutely terrible. I was putting out these videos on YouTube as a self-professed sex expert, getting like 10 and 20 views at a time. <laughs> 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 just like the most embarrassing thing you could ever think of. <laughs> yeah. You're ex, no, right. mates, no you're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but then like I just, my friend just kept telling me to be consistent and I just kept being consistent. And then at one point I just had a couple of videos that went viral and people started putting in the comments. I like, like this helped me so much. This is, and the women were saying, this is exactly what I wanted. And, and then from there it grew. Yeah. Once I start, got a couple of virals, then I had the confidence to keep going and and went hard. Do your parents know about this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How do you bring they that do. up? Is it no, like well, your dad was like, I was, I was looking for some... <laughs> Oh, yeah? Yeah. My mum said to my brother, I think, I think he's doing porn, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I don't know. They, they sort of. They were like, because I did um, civil engineering as a degree. And um, I remember when I finished my degree, um, my parents were like, yeah, so are you going to, um, you're going to get like a nice job and sort of settle down now? And I was like, actually, 
like in a few weeks I'm moving to Copenhagen and I'm gonna I'm gonna gamble for a living. <laughs> so that like that was like the, that was a bigger shock than when I told them this. So yeah, I'd already yeah. sort of shattered their dreams of a, a sudden nice. normal life. So this was the it wasn't too bad. I eased them into it. Yeah. I help That's people awesome. with their intimacy problems, et cetera, et cetera, like in, in a way that parents can handle. I understand. Yeah. yeah. It's like how um, pickup artists, whenever they're on, on the street and someone, this is always a gripe of mine, but when someone's like, do you do this to, or like, what are you doing here? Or do you do this to a lot of girls? They're always like, uh, I'm a, a public speaker teacher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that kind of thing. I teach <laughs> meditation and mindfulness. Life coach, life coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of this <laughs> bullshit. Um, yeah. So, well, that's a, that's a good point actually, because teaching people how to meet and interact with girls is so. Um, well, I was going to say it's so noble. Obviously, it can be done in a way that's not noble, but it's so important, right? And so mm. is learning, learning to be able to communicate with the opposite sex, um, and learning to be able to have sex. Uh, in a way that yeah. you and your partners enjoy. It's like so important and it's so noble. And yet, unfortunately, it's, uh, well, you know, I mean, it's, it's, we live in a society where it's, you know, we're still kind of prudish and embarrassed about sex. Uh, well, I mean, it's looked at as like so sexist and like it couldn't be further from the truth, man. Even the pickup stuff, which could be argued to be sexist, and there are going to be guys that sort of say take advantage of that and, 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 and lead girls on in a way that, you could argue is not cool, but the vast majority of guys that are going to learn this stuff are going to end up settling down rather quickly with a nice girl who would, they would have never have met if they hadn't learned those skills. And she would have never met if he hadn't improved himself in these ways. It's really the vast majority of the time, a win-win situation for both the men and the women. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, but the I fringe mean, cases are focused on. Yeah, even if you're a guy who doesn't want to settle down and just wants to date casually, then yeah. it still makes sense to be pretty good at it. Like the yeah. the worst thing for the women of the world is for you to be shit at chatting to women and talking yeah. to a lot yeah. of them yeah. and yeah. shit at sex and having a lot of sex. Like that's a whole lot of disappointment you're putting out into the world. So I I I find it hard to to see to see that what what the issue is to, with, with this stuff um with the more like there are some dodgy channels out there but uh with the stuff that's all like above board and good i just i don't get how it not not everyone's celebrating it but i have seen on your on your youtube channel like lots of women being like like celebrating it too so it's, yeah. i don't want to paint this picture like it was men loving it and women hating it i i, I didn't get that impression either Honestly, I don't think that uh, it's in any way, shape, or form a majority of people out there who have a problem with any of this stuff. Uh, like, I don't know. I honestly don't know anyone who themselves has an issue with, you know, game game advice online, sex advice of of your the type of sex mm -hmm. advice you give. I don't know anyone who has. I think it's just a very loud, screeching, but small minority of people who have an issue with this yeah. because. Most people know that, like at least on some level, they're like, "Yeah, this is this is just this is just how reality really does work." Like yeah. it's kind of obvious, really. You know, when it when it's said, it's like, mm, "Yeah, fair enough." You know. But that loud minority, they just throw out the most extreme names to anyone who is outside of what they deem acceptable. You know, everyone's a Nazi or a rapist or. Um, or whatever so that everyone else is like whoa 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 all right then don't touch all right they're bad then i don't want to be defending nazis and rapists you know yeah. what i think you know? now would be a really good time actually thinking about our listeners there will be you know some of our listeners out there who really don't know your stuff and are not familiar with with your kind of core concepts so right. it might be a good <laughs> idea to actually kind of fill them in so like if, <laughs> like what would be your because you okay so you give advice that i'm now saying most people would kind of just agree with on a kind of a on a on a on, I don't know on a on a on a gut level. They're like, yeah, that makes sense. But that a, a squawking minority of people have enough of a problem with that you've been banned from YouTube, right? So, what is your general overarching kind of uh, message? So, I am um, a sex coach, basically, and 
I teach at the moment, mostly men to how to improve their relationships by improving in bed and improving relationships means whatever that means to them, whether that means improving their relationship with their wife or their long term partner or, you know, sleeping with more girls, whatever they whatever they want to do. And mm -hmm. so I focus on how to give uh, women more orgasms, more intense orgasms, different types of orgasms, multiple orgasms, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I try and take those concepts and break them down in the most straightforward, step-by-step -step way that I possibly can. Because a lot of the stuff I used to read when I was learning this stuff, when I was passionate and trying to fix this problem, it was also often esoteric and woo-woo mm -hmm. that I really wanted to bring it to the concrete mm -hmm. and make it accessible for the normal guy out there who just wants to learn how to get good at this stuff. Yeah. And it, with regards to longer term relationships, um, I think it ties in quite nicely with how a lot of guys, uh, and, and I've been this guy too, even in my last relationship, I was this dude where at the start, you were the guy who was deserving of that kind of relationship, whatever deserving means. But um, by the end, you're not. You like switch back into oh, yeah. beta mode. Right. Right. Um, and then a lot of people fail to see that it's that that caused them to no longer get the attraction or the, or the sex or even just generally the respect, you know, because mm -hmm. you weren't who they signed up to be with. I mean, it's fair enough, to be honest. If, if you were a certain person when they met you and then all of a sudden you're like this whimpering little mm. uh, right. boy, then what do you expect? It's um, absolutely fair enough, man, absolutely, yeah. for sure. And how how much of this is this? How much of this is practical? Like ninety degree bend in the forearm, you know? Like how much is that? <laughs> well, I actually vigorous. do try and break it down like that. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. not quite like that, but I really, really wanted guys to say my first book, the Donna Desire Method, for example. I wanted anyone to be able to pick that up. And just, I broke that shit down step by step, move your hand here, blah, blah, yeah. blah, then here, then here, then here. And and I made it effective and it works. Like, yeah. it, it, it's a universal thing. Um, Is it universal but I mean, though? Like, as in, because I've heard from lots of different sources that the anatomy of every different woman is different, right? Like, some mm -hmm. have a G-spot here, some have a G-spot there, right, some have right. an insensitive G-spot, some can't come, right. apparently. Some can't squirt. Like, is that sh is that shit not real? You or? you are you maybe maybe I shouldn't have said universal. I would say yeah, as yeah. close to universal as possible because, but there are just certain things that are so close to universal that you may can you may as well consider them universal. Let's just say if you go really basic, kissing. Do women enjoy kissing? Yeah, I guess there are some women out there who don't enjoy kissing, but you, you're better off going in assuming that every woman assume, um, enjoys some sort of kissing. But yeah. there, there is more than that, and you can expand on that. For example, this is now more mainstream knowledge, uh, but it wasn't until maybe 10 or so years ago, is the, the importance of foreplay to women compared to men. And that was never focused on so much before, I don't know, I guess before the internet. Um, but that also is something that is so close to universal that is worth considering universal. Yeah. Um, most women to enjoy sex, to have good sex, most of the time need a, a decent amount of foreplay, 20 to 30 minutes at least, I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there are. So I break it. I, I tried to focus, especially in the first book, on those things that are close to universal. And then as we differ away from those things, um, I do bring, I start to bring in the communication stuff so you can uh, you can figure that stuff out, the personal 
yeah, yeah. Uh, differences. Where where do you where do you feel like a uh, porn comes in with this? Because you, when you say like most women need twenty or thirty minutes of foreplay, I feel like yeah, personally, man, I, I probably usually don't give it that much, and <laughs> and, and, and I and, and I'm thinking that I should, but also when you watch porn, I'll the message is. Oh, yeah, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> when you watch porn, though, the message is well, not the message, but what you watch again and again, it's just like it's just like it's just like yeah, plowing, yeah. and it's not. Yeah. There's no sensuality yeah. to it. And do you think that um, porn has, in a sense, it's fucked guys? Please continue. I'm really interested in this. <laughs> right. Well, because none of us have any sexual education when we grow up. Really, I mean, you have, you know don't catch chlamydia in school and that's about the extent of the conversation stick your dick in a girl without a condom and you're guaranteed to get aids that's the message they like you know they don't nobody nobody tells you anything about mm. a clitoris you have to go out and find it yourself mm. um and so basically if if no if your older brother's not telling you uh, unlikely your parents definitely aren't telling you your, your, your school's not telling you so all guys have left is porn and if you watch porn you know the idea you're going to come away with is you need a 10 inch dick you need to run into the room take a leap land in a pussy and smash her as hard as you can for 30 <laughs> minutes in every position you could possibly imagine and that's how you satisfy a woman and it couldn't be further from the truth and if you, you speak know, to most women for five minutes you'll find out that most guys are totally clueless and as you said at the beginning, not only are they totally clueless, but they're confident, they're confident in their ignorance. They think mm. they're the man, which yeah. just makes it even worse. Wow. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the funny thing um, is when you talked about like that couple when you, in your origin story, and um, this says probably a lot about me, but it probably also says a lot about a porn conditioned modern mind. Like when you talked about the couple next door screaming, like, the picture that came into my head was just some, you know, ridiculous porn style, like <laughs> slamming going on. And I was like, oh, I, I didn't I didn't even for a second think about some guy who'd put in like 45 minutes of gentle foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> and was now reaping the rewards of that effort. Like it just fucking my brain didn't go there. What do you the, say? I'm not that, well, I'm not saying that there isn't a time and a place for that sort of sex. I know, man. I know. I know. I yeah. Know. Yeah. yeah. I'm just you, saying that it needs a build up. Yes. Would you say yeah. on average, like similar to probably post, you know, posting YouTube videos or articles or whatever else, like, is it better to have less and much higher quality? Like, because realistically, most days you're not going to have 40 minutes for foreplay and then another 40 for sex. Like, mm, okay. You, yeah, 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 yeah. Is that yeah. fair to say? I mean, the thought I of doing that for me is like, <laughs> do, <laughs> you know that's i gotta have to completely change my schedule um the, the the quality of the sex for a woman will correlate with the tension that you build beforehand and you can build that tension through the foreplay as i describe but there are other ways that you can build it as well you could build that tension through sexting in the day, teasing throughout mm -hmm. the day. And then when you get home, you're already going to be at that level where she may be ready to sec, uh, for sex and she may be ready to orgasm very quickly because you've built that tension. But that's what it all comes down to, that tension. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You can, you can like, don't get me wrong. Like, if you're not doing this stuff every day, you can still have a good sex life and... Um, you can still bring her to an orgasm and you can still show her a good time. Um, but the, the levels that you're going to bring her to are just not going to be as high. And I would say like at least once a week, you just want to set a little bit of time aside um, to really give her the, 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 the full Monty, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it Lord makes of sense. The rings fellowship of the rings three hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, it, it, it makes a lot of sense. And, it's something definitely, admittedly, even in my current relationship, it's like at the start, like fully willing to go as long as I need to go and like um, yeah. willing to sacrifice sleep and that kind of thing. And then right. it, it's been a common uh, scenario where as it extends beyond the first year that I'm just like, ah, I want to sleep. Yeah. Um, 
And, and, <laughs> and the, that doesn't mean I don't want sex. It's that the stuff before the sex becomes less and less appealing right. as a general thing. Like I, I still want to have sex every day, but the 40 minutes of foreplay every day just becomes less and um and I, I think comes well I'm I'm certain that for some guys that's the case is that they they are relatively good but it's the the effort that they stop putting in because I don't know they just want it the way they want it how right. do you, have you found that people have come to you like that and been like how do I get more excited about you know twiddling on the back of a knee for 12 minutes <laughs> um yeah it's a good point well but that was it would be why i talk like in the i have another book on dirty talk and dirty mm -hmm. talk it's called dirty talk confidence and in that one we explore less of the mechanical side of it and more delving into um fantasies how to get her on board with things that you find more exciting and how to even explore uh, something that does sound a little bit uncomfortable for guys, but sort of fancy and role play stuff because yeah, you do need to keep that, um, uh, that, that the passion alive in yourself. Yeah, but the yeah. thing is like you're, to me, it feels like you're going to put in this effort in one way or another. You're either going to put it in up front and give her that foreplay. And, and then not only are you going to have all the sex you want and the great, but she's going to be looking to uh, make you happy, you know, she's going to return the favor when you put in that effort. And if you don't put in that effort up front, you're going to be dealing with a lot of drama on the back end. Yeah. yeah, makes a lot of sense. And so I wanted to ask this in terms of, and maybe this is a stupid question, but I'm sure lots of people have this in their mind. What's the, the breakdown of mechanics to psychology in terms of like what, if you had to pick one of those two two things, and maybe you can't, but if you had to, which would get a woman more crazy if you had to pick one? I would say that more crazy is like uh, the psycho psychological stuff, definitely. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, it is like, for women, it's almost all psychological stuff. Like the one way I like to think about it is if, if you, if you um, master the mechanical side of it, you can get to a point fairly easily where you're going to be most likely the best she's ever had, which is great for most guys. But for a woman, there's a huge difference between the best she's ever had and what she's capable of experiencing because men, most men set the bar quite low. So being the best she's ever had compared to other men is, 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 is good. It's great. And, and, and she'll appreciate it and she'll want to repay the favor. But when you're talking about, taking her to giving her an emotional experience that is on the edge of what it's possible for her to achieve. Like that is just, just absurd. That is just most, you, most women don't even understand what that means. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So that is an exploration of the psychological stuff. When you yeah. put it like that, it does sound kind of worth the effort, doesn't it? Cause yeah. Uh, in a sense, uh, yeah, I'm kind of almost, um, I'm like uh, thinking about the time it would take and then thinking about sex as in, you know, the quality of just like a normal quick uh, little mm -hmm. bit of sex. But actually it, it isn't that. It's like if you put in the effort, then the sex that ends up happening is is kind of orders of magnitude more rewarding yeah. afterwards. So yeah, yeah, probably worth it. And that stuff spills out into your relationship. Oh, I don't sure. think it's just about what's happening in the bedroom. Fucking right, right man. I've been in relationships where like the sex was like never – it was it was never uh, i don't know it, it there was oh, something missing from it and uh you know i've mm -hmm. put it down to different things chemistry yada yada i don't know what it was but um yeah it's it's a real like blight on your uh relationship it's like a dark cloud over your time together even if you're getting on well it's like always kind of there in the back of your mind and and then the opposite is obviously true like i mean if things are going really well sexually i mean your whole relationship just kind of flourishes and Totally, man. Especially when you get into the uh, the kinkier stuff or the fantasies, because if you're going to explore that, you, it might sound cheesy, but you really have to um, you really, really have to trust each other to explore that and 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 feel comfortable and, and safe around the other person. 
Um, mm. And that that builds that makes something special in a relationship when you're able to do that with uh, with your partner. Mm. So what, what you're advising here is just such a, I know I've talked about this already, but it's a complete polar opposite. It's starkly different to porn. To porn. Fucking yeah. hell, man. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's really sad. I mean. It's and, really and, tragic. And, yeah, yeah. And then, and, and kids, I mean, you know, you were, you were a 12 year old boy. If you had a smartphone in your hand at 12 years old that could reach anything in, on the internet, you, you would have been looking at, everything you could find and, it, and it, we, we were like like we're not that far from it from age and each other and like when we were kids i was basically when the, the internet was useless and when i was a kid mm. and we were stuck with just like a magazine which is not that much now when to have to, to see the hardcore shit that is on pornhub on a phone as a child before you're even a teenager is just yeah. crazy man yeah, and I think, yeah, and think that's normal. We're, I think we're, it we're relatively you up lucky. From two no, pers- two, in two ways. So it's in the, the this is how sex is done way, but then it's on a deeper level too of like, this is how easy it should be to get my yeah. rock up. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. I should be able to come in two minutes and look mm-hmm. at a thousand women. And then when you have to the then the thought of having foreplay like any form of foreplay must sound like absolutely <laughs> yeah. terrifying yeah. you know yeah, like yeah, why yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and, and, that's, and the fact that and another way is like because you you did the pickup stuff and the and the thing about pickup is it's like it's like um chiseling yourself out of stone like you're gonna you're gonna go up and all of your awkward antisocial tendencies are gonna get you these harsh rejections and slowly they're gonna be painfully chiseled off of you until you are until you become an attractive person. But if you can just look at your phone and get this easy access, then you never develop these positive social skills and you know you're just screwed. It is absolutely amazing to think that I I, I think there's few other areas where we just come out of the womb with no lessons in how to do this shit and just <laughs> everyone's like i'm the best like <laughs> what else could you do that with like not also driving. Guys, guys are like that with fighting as well mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yeah that's yeah. another one that's another one they're the two things yeah. um well there is a lot fucking... of ego involved in in but well, there can be a lot of ego attachment in in sex and which is another reason for if you look at a lot of porn i mean and then you you almost feel like oh maybe it's vaguely weak and emasculating for me to put in you know 30 minutes of gentle foreplay like shit maybe i should be doing what these guys are doing mm-hmm. because she seems to love what he's doing so much right. but it's all a fucking act you know it's all completely yeah, it's fake. So, fake. Mm. so fake so what are the most common questions that you usually get like the the, is, the issues that guys are having and, and they come to you desperate to find a solution yeah the, i mean we could talk about the most common mistakes that guys make sure um, let's do that um so and i would say it depends what level you're coming from um but the most common mistake sort of step one is a focus on the um sex and the sex alone guys try to ask me how uh to best pleasure a woman through sex, not thinking about how important the foreplay is. And so I would say like, even to the point, forget about the sex and and focus on the foreplay. And when I talk about the foreplay, we could talk about the clip versus the G spot. So the clip is the part on the outside of the vagina. And if the guys don't know, it's just like a little pee-like um, spot just above her vagina. And that is the most, uh, sensitive part of a woman so through sex women can't orgasm let's say it this way not every woman can orgasm consistently all the time through penetrative sex but through clitoral stimulation um, mo- almost every woman can or- orgasm almost every time if you stimulate it quite well so to come back to what you were saying I, I really can't I really can't bring myself to do 40, 40 minutes of foreplay uh, before I have sex each night. I would say if you're not going to do that, at least give her a clitoral orgasm 
before you have sex every time because you might not bring her to the highest heights if you just but usually within 10 minutes 10 minutes of oral sex you can bring most women to an orgasm mm -hmm. and then have sex and then at least she's you know that she's going to be at least somewhat satisfied with that once guys are sorry i just take a sip once guys sort of have that down they sort of figure out the clip and how important it is then the sort of next mistake is guys are like because we're guys we're like okay now i have the cheat code i hit i tap x and i, I keep tapping that and i win the game yeah but it, obviously it's not quite like that and so then the next step from there would be um let's say uh you have like you have flirting with a girl and then you take her clothes off and then you take her lingerie off and then you stimulate her clit to orgasm and then you have sex so guys try to rush through every single one of those phases as quickly as they can they try and rip her clothes off throw her on the bed um rip her lick her pussy as fast as they can to orgasm get it in get the job done in the most graphic way possible and but the more you spread out each of those phases um the more tension you're going to build with the girl the more turned on she's going to be and that eventual orgasm that you do give her through her clitoris before you have sex is going to um is going to be so much more powerful than if you just go uh straight to her clit and when mm. i say more powerful i mean like she's saying she's like what is going on who are you why how did you how did you learn how to do this and like th that's that's not an exaggeration that's the sort of thing you're going to hear if you do that sort of thing um yeah, yeah yeah i will come back one more thing i spoke about uh, stimulating the clitoris is the clitoris is so sensitive that when you go for it it is much better to do oral sex for most guys than fingering it because mm. your your finger is a little bit rough and if it's a little bit dry or not uh, there's not enough lube then it can tug on it and that's not painful it's like imagine a dry finger running across the head of your dick it's it's not going to feel good and that's you know two three four times as sen uh, not less sensitive than a, than a clip yeah, yeah so mm -hmm. with your tongue it's hard to go wrong your tongue is big it's soft it's wet so by stimulating it with your tongue you can't really go wrong um yeah and then and then once you've got those mechanics down then it's time to focus on the dirty talk but that's that's a big big old conversation so <laughs> it it's um it's great to have you on and and to to talk about these things because even when when I was asking some of our audience uh questions and I was like put it in the like on on our group don't like message privately because this stuff shouldn't be awkward right like right we all have sex hopefully uh it should just be like a normal thing it's like it's ch childlike to me to think that we're still in this phase of like shh, sex is like is, is this thing we can't talk about and it's a bit naughty and like it, it's tiring that we do that but nonetheless even though i said that everyone only messaged me privately um, <laughs> and they were kind of meek questions because you know they have to tell me directly with their facebook profile what they you know what their issues are with sex so it's good that you're you're going through these and i'm, I'm hoping that some of our audience are helped by this and to be honest for me it's like um i i had got a bit lazy like I, right. I always do the the foreplay stuff in, in terms of head that's fine but like you know the more intricate like like i said back of the knee uh, yeah, yeah, yeah i do yeah. i do do a bit of it and then i'm and as sad as this is i just feel this like ah this is a bit boring and i think it yeah. it, it maybe it's porn i haven't watched porn uh much in, in many years but i also think it's other stuff it's like your phone and just the the general like environment of instant gratification that makes mm -hmm. it hard for us to do this with anything and it makes complete sense that when you take your time like like for instance when i eat i just stuff myself and it's it's gone in a second and i barely 
I can barely th feel it or, th or think, think about it because I've gone through it so quick. And that feels like the only way I can enjoy it. And like watching weekend, YouTube videos while you eat. Yeah, so yeah. Like yeah. YouTube, <laughs> getting my nipples massaged, like every kind of, you know, it's like I, I need to be overly stimulated in every single way. Like I went for a walk today and tried to take my headphones off and not listen to music. And it was like, it was almost traumatic. But um, I was doing that for a while and it's the same thing. <laughs> and that, like I would have a little argument before I step out the door, shall I take my AirPods yeah, or yeah. shall I go? Shall I should I should walk with no music and, and just let my thoughts percolate? But and then uh, no, no, the, the, yeah. the, the, pod, the podcast wins. <laughs> yeah. So much easier, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But yeah, on the weekend I was doing this like mindful retreat thing with my government, and um, part of it, part of the schedule was to eat every meal mindfully, like in mm -hmm. silence. Yeah. And it was torture. Was it a meditation weekend? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but just online, silent, right? a silent retreat, or no? Si silent retreat, yeah. Oh, um, and we kept, you know, going to talk to each other because mm. we just couldn't sit in that like silence. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then, as you get used to it, you do start going, "Wow, this is like what food actually tastes like when you All take right. your time." <laughs> and I feel like sex is is the same thing. You know, it's like. Have you ever when, done no fat? Yeah, I've done no fap. Yeah. Did you experience yeah. benefits? Not the superpower stuff that they talk about, but mm. uh, I'm, yeah, I'm two sure. weeks. I'm two weeks in. Uh, oh yeah. Like I, I've done it. I've done it the longest I've ever gone in my life because I'm quite. I'm quite addictive and compulsive when it comes to porn mm -hmm. watching. Or yeah. even since the, my very earliest memory, like you know, luckily I, luckily I hit puberty before. Uh, as you were saying earlier on, the internet got really fast. But you know, yeah. even just fucking calendars or uh, the daily sport or yeah. anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then when when the internet came out, that was so. The the longest I've ever gone was six months, um, and I feel like that really stood to me because even after that, when I would fall very much off the wagon again, even for like long periods of time. And um, I feel like that six months just kind of changed, just changed something mm -hmm. in my brain maybe forever so it never was quite the same again but uh yeah it can catch up on you and you're like fuck man for the last couple of months i've been binging again and that's kind of where i was at two weeks ago so i was like fuck okay i'm, I'm gonna try this again so now i'm two weeks in it'll be my two week uh be two weeks tomorrow and man it's just fuck it's night and day and yeah. the thing about porn is because it's um because it's it's enjoyable and uh addictive if you're anything like me, you'll just be in denial. You'll make amazing, intelligent, rational-seeming excuses for why it isn't a problem. Yeah? But then when I, I like literally, man, I've I've argued with my brother. I've I've talked to Yasin about this. I'm like, no, no, but I'm I'm you know, it's fine for these reasons. But when you stop, it's just night and day, night and day. Like I want to just stand on the rooftops and just tell everyone. It's like, <laughs> and then the really bad thing is you you'll read psychologists online and and whatnot saying, oh no, porn's not the issue. Like porn's not porn's not a problem. Uh, porn's kind of healthy or whatever. And they're completely missing the point. Like, I don't care what they say. They are wrong. Mm. They are they are coming from the perspective of um, porn is not uh, something that we should be embarrassed about. Uh, it shouldn't be taboo. And I would agree with them on that. Porn's just porn. Who cares, right? But high speed internet porn is a different kettle of fish, and it is highly, highly, highly detrimental. I think to men in numerous ways. You know what's fucking terrifying is, um, you know. Yeah, um, see what see what this high speed porn has done. See what having porn on your phone has done. We are just we are at the pong stage of VR right now. VR is so clunky, and in five to ten years, you're going to have a fucking HD VR headset with a haptic feedback vagina and some sex robot that talks back to you with AI. Do you know what I'm saying? That is <laughs> That's about to get good. That's going to be an, an amazing game changer. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it'll bring people a lot of pleasure, but it's going to absolutely... People are going to drop out of society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 People will not leave the house. People will yeah. just... You know. It's already happening. Yeah. You know, Japan is the canary in the coal mine for this. Yeah, kind of stuff. and it's not looking good over there. No, no, no. <laughs> Nobody's no. having babies. No. But um, I, 
no fap i'm i'm unsure whether i'm fully on board like no porn i think is good for most most people but i actually when i was younger i'd see like a, a shadow of a woman and come so <laughs> I, I used to use uh wanking to like extend out how long i could go because there right, was just right, no right, hope right. if i didn't right. train in some way that i would be with a girl and right be you yeah. know, well, able to go for 30 minutes 40 minutes i think there's a giant difference between no porn and no fap i mean like if you're a single no fap is like yeah sorry go ahead no i'm just gonna say like if you're single like for a long period of time i don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with masturbating i mean well <laughs> there's nothing wrong with masturbating obviously from a moral standpoint but i just mean in terms of your uh i don't know what the word would be like just ability to feel good in the world i think masturbation is fine i think porn is the real issue yeah yeah i, I think would say that but I, but i mean i would also say like guys should experiment with this because I, i'm not one of those diehard evangelists that you should never that you should never wank but i just know for me personally once i've gone say two weeks with with no wanking and no ejaculation my brain kicks into overdrive it's sort yeah. of like it's sort of like it's like yo what the fuck's going on right now and why aren't we reproducing you need to get your ass into the gear you need to eat good you need to meet women you need to sort your business out and my ambition skyrockets my confidence yeah. skyrockets mm -hmm. and i know you that they're, they're sort of the superpowers that you said you didn't experience but for me like i went into the idea of it very very skeptical that anything would happen and two weeks in, and I was like, holy shit. Yeah. This is amazing. Mm. But I mean, I like sex too much to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to keep it up for a long time. But that's but the when thing. I, do I, it, I feel like there's a, it, and there's studies showing that like, I think seven to 14 days, your testosterone yeah. spikes and then it comes down again. Yeah. And what I've found, or what I at least hypothesize would happen to me is that I'd get so desperate for sex that when I would be speaking to these women, it would no longer be like, hey, how are you doing? It would be like, hey, <laughs> give it to me, you know? And uh, yeah, yeah. and I've definitely, you know, sort of entered into that realm a little bit and been like, man, I, I just need to have a little wank and I'll be fine. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. I, I mean, it could, and, but I would say like, fair enough, but experiment for yourself and find yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, Because absolutely. I would say the opposite happens for me. Yeah. Mm. And so, also, I think if you are going to do it, like same as with all this other stuff, it's like if you are just wanking just to come with no like uh, forward thinking about how it's going to impact the sex that you have, you're probably going to come super, super quick when you have mm -hmm. sex with girls because the intention when you have sex alone most of the time is that you just want to come as quick as you can, right? So if that's how you, if that's how you train yourself, Right, then of right, right. course. Yeah, very true. Very true. Yeah, yeah. 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 I have a whole uh, course on that, actually. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah. Get control fast. Well, it's like it's training yourself through uh, manipulation of your muscles down there to be yeah, able yeah. to last as long as you want. And then actually, we go on to talk about um, non ejaculatory orgasms. Do you know about mm. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a what's it called? What's that? Uh, like a spiritual thing? Tantric. Tantric stuff, yeah. Yeah, they, I mean, it can be, but again, I, I just like to bring it down to the practical. Like, you can you can separate it so that you can feel the feeling of an orgasm without anything coming out, mm. and then that 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 feeling that you're gonna bust goes away, and you can just keep going and having sex, and you can do that over and over again, which is is pretty cool. Sounds great. It's, yeah, it's a fun is, thing. Is, yeah. is that a lot of work? <laughs> it can. It take it takes um a bit a few weeks of consistent practice. Oh, that's not bad. It's not like yeah. four years under. No, no, you don't have to go and live in a mountain and yeah, yeah, yeah. wank every day in, in a cave <laughs> or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> four years of non-stop edging. <laughs> <laughs> With like one of those sippy cup hats. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, well, I was going to say something. It escapes me now, but yeah. So with, have you ever this has happened to me just a few times and i've always been like man this would be fucking cool which is where you come and then yeah. you can keep going so it's a it's kind of like that but a bit different as well right um, and it just seems to happen very randomly uh and you know the standard thing is you come and then 
you get like overly sensitive and have to stop or whatever. Um, is there some sort of way to make that happen? I don't know about that. I can't do that. And okay. uh, you, you're the first person that's come All right, to me. I'll write actually. a book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. Like you can, like, that's why I like to focus on the, the non ejaculatory orgasm thing because you do, it feels exactly like you are orgasming. So you yeah. do get that satisfaction, but nothing comes out and you, and, and most guys are able to just keep the erection and keep going. But yeah. actually coming and keep going? No, I don't know about that. Maybe if you had a few women lined up. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh so a few weeks. That's that's uh Yeah, I think you can do it in a few weeks, yeah. You have to be quite consistent with your practice, but you can do it in a few weeks. I'm down for for trying that. I'll I'll let <laughs> someone know how it goes. <laughs> um Steven, I'll give you access to the course. Yeah, do. I mean, you've said it twice now and we've recorded it, so well, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, no problem um so i think now would be a good time to like talk about like where you see stuff going for you like i know you were sort of un unsure of of the future but like where can people find you and what things are you looking to do in the future um so now i mean we had plans for the future and now sort of a spanner has been thrown in the works um so we have many courses out. We have uh, four different courses. So now the YouTube is gone. We're sort of building up the. With we got, a, I have guys need to find me, and they. I, if I'm going to help guys, they need to be able to find my stuff. So now I'm coming on a podcast like yours, and you guys were kind enough to have me on and have this chat, and uh, and I'm going to be doing more of that, more media outreach, and if COVID um, eases up, hopefully soon. Uh, I, I plan to do more um, in-person uh, events and stuff like that, talking on stage. Mm. Um, yeah, and building my website from there and just looking for different different ways to reach out to people now. Yeah. Would you ever start yeah. a, a podcast or? A... Oh, yeah, that's it. That's, I'm, I'm planning to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. But not yet. Yeah, yeah. Not, nothing we can point no. people toward. No, no, I have stuff like all my uh, videos got pulled off of YouTube, uh, as we've discussed. Um, but I luckily I had them all on a hard drive. Yeah. So um, everyone who has uh, purchased my first book, The Donald Desire Method, I gave uh, them access to it. That's 100 videos. Uh, they get access to that as a, like a thank you for supporting me. Yeah. And um, I give I'm giving six uh, of some of my uh, best videos away for free if guys want to sign up for that. Mm -hmm. And we can set up a link for that for, uh, for sure, for sure. Your, your listeners. It will be, we'll do it at donaldesire.com forward slash good guys. If they go there and sign up, we get, we'll give them in, uh, access to six videos. So we'll have like uh, what women want in bed, um, how to lick pussy. Um, what else we got? We got the best uh, positions for G spot orgasms, how to thrust properly so that you can last longer um and um also pleasure your woman more uh what was the other one three touches to turn any woman on oh and how to get more blowjobs from your partner which every guy likes so mm. yeah we sign up and uh, i'll give you access to those and you can check out my stuff uh the only thing i ask for guys is just if you're going to watch my stuff just please don't take my word for it just put that stuff to practice as soon as you can and and just see for yourself whether it works or not yeah yeah I mean, when I was first learning about pickup stuff, it, it was the same thing. Like I probably for a year just sat there like comatose on the couch watching other people pick yeah. up girls yeah. and never yeah. doing anything like, yeah, that's sweet, that's sweet, that's sweet. <laughs> Next one. Uh, I feel like this is a bit creepier to do, just like one year of watch, <laughs> watching Charles Black. Nice, nice, nice. Um, so yeah, definitely don't be that guy. Like put it into practice. Um, I often find that until you're you're actually ready to to use this shit, there's not even a point. Yeah, I, I've gone through this process with investing, learning about Photoshop, mm -hmm. editing, like everything. It's mm -hmm. like I'll go through this phase of I'll buy shit, download shit, and then never actually use it, or right. or, you, or watch the stuff but never implement. 
And then I end up when I'm actually motivated having to go through all of that stuff again. So it's uh, don't delude yourself. I think like the only way that any of this stuff sticks is when you implement what you've what you've learned. Otherwise, it's just like uh, YouTube porn or whatever else. Um, so get out there and start having sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, have foreplay. <laughs> Yeah, fucking hell, man. Stephen, have you learned nothing? No, no, I'm absolutely yes. Yeah, fucking great point. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was the old Stephen talking. The new Stephen is going to be a new man. I'm actually looking forward to taking my time from now. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very much. Uh, and I would um, love to hear uh, hear your uh, feedback on. Cool. If it, if it makes a difference for you, that would be for sure. We will cool to hear. Mm -hmm. And also, um, let us know when the podcast is out, and we'll we'll ping that to our audience as well. Oh, amazing, amazing. Yeah, um, and, and come on again. We could even do a, a dedicated episode to no fat benefits. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Anything you like, man. It was. A, I enjoyed the conversation, and like I said, I, I, I I've been going through your uh, your episodes since uh, since you guys reached out to me, and I, I love them, man. I really, nice, really, really nice. enjoy it. Really yeah, appreciate that, man. Stuff. Um, nice one. Would you ever try TikTok? Do you reckon you'd get booted off that even quicker? I don't know enough about it to be honest. I, I, yeah. I would be I would be open to trying it. As far as I knew, uh, it was only twenty second videos or something like that, which I didn't <laughs> think would be sort of uh, <laughs> good good for me. Yeah, but maybe the, the have you guys put anything out? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> really fucking slow. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you guys put anything out on there? No, no, no. But I think. Um, it's getting huge, and I think there are ways yeah. to not put twenty second. I've right, seen people right, put right. up much longer than that. Um, mm -hmm. I should look into it. I'm being it, amateur by not looking into that stuff. I think, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like uh, Instagram, but you can actually rank, and or like right. YouTube was back in the day. You know, it's like still ripe for for uh, domination. So right, totally. Uh, check it out. I don't know. I, it's a younger audience, but you know, everyone is having sex, so. It's not like they don't need it. Um, okay, so although you know this is a conversation for another day, but apparently I've, I read a I read a, an article and then a couple of kind of follow on studies and stuff that say that apparently young people, millennials especially, uh, are having less sex than yeah. any other generation before, which I find quite uh, I don't know, surprising and interesting. I don't. I mean, yeah. I I mean, like it's like what we're talking about: instant access porn, nonstop social media these endless swiping and instant gratification like nobody's developing any social skills it, yeah it, it's, it's it's and then people yeah. criticize game and uh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Things. it's like jesus christ i mean wow we've got things completely <laughs> <backwards. laughs> yeah um does dick size matter well so let i would say i would put it this way it's a very common question yeah and what i would say is if you don't know what you're doing, dick size is everything. If you do know what you're doing, dick size is nothing. What a great answer. <laughs> would you actually say it's nothing? I would look, I've got guys. I'll show you this uh review. I've got yeah. a guy who followed my um dirty talk confidence course, and he got his girl to the point through certain methods where he had her orgasming. From her sucking his dick. Whoa! Like, if if you can do that, do you really think she cares what you're yeah, packing yeah. in your jeans? Does it really matter at all? It doesn't matter. Wow! And, you know, if you're able to 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 get a woman so desperate to have you inside, like you can follow certain, not even my advice, just sex advice, and as a lesbian, and and be the best a woman has experienced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what what I will say is there are, it's like a bell curve, and there are, and the importance of uh, a penis is like to, to a woman is on that bell curve, and there are going to be some small percentage of women who are call them size queens or whatever who are obsessed with it, but they are in such a minority that the importance is just, you know. Yeah. Just learn what you're doing and, and you're never going to hear a complaint. Like if you've slept with um, a few girls, do you really, is the only thing you're thinking about to think back to how good she was in bed, 
how tight she was like as long as it wasn't some outrageous thing it, it's probably not high up there on what you're thinking when you sort of think about who was the best woman you ever had in bed yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean to it's be honest many... when i was when i was young i i have like slightly above average nothing special but mm -hmm. from all the porn that i watched it was like oh fuck man i'm like yeah i've got this tiniest dick in the world <laughs> um and it's like how so i mean and that's with with not having an actual issue but how do you navigate that world when you have like a three inch four inch right, dick right, right, right. like one that, thing I, I would say yeah go ahead one thing i would say is that basically our whole life we were we were growing up um we were told six inches is the average and um but there was a study a couple of years ago and this woman thought to herself because all of those studies that had been done on uh, dick average had asked guys how long is their penis and this woman had thought to herself maybe there's a chance that guys are not being completely honest when they're giving us this data yeah so she set it up to do um standardized measurements and it had it was a huge sample size it was something like twenty thousand or fifty thousand or something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. and the actual average size was uh 5.3 inches which uh i'm not exactly sure what that is in centimeters but that's like uh i don't know 13 centimeters 12 yeah. 13 centimeters like compared to 15 so um most guys um are within average like the vast yeah, yeah. majority if you're like four to six inches you could consider yourself average and then for the guys that are smaller than that just learn what to do and see for yourself the reaction uh that women give you i don't feel right now that there's too much that i can say that is going to get rid of your um insecurity yeah, but i yeah. feel that once you start putting it to work in the bedroom you'll see the reaction and you'll gain the confidence yourself yeah um i, th I think that's that's probably the only way like, is like this visceral oh is that actually doesn't matter and then yeah pounding that home excuse the pun time and time yeah. again like <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, yeah i think that's the only way to get over this this kind yeah. of stuff and yeah. and then probably also because i some people i imagine go down the route of like dick pumps and stuff like that i don't know yeah. if any of your audience or people you've spoken to have been like man i've tried all the dick pumps and like now i'm you know i'm twice the size or do you find because i imagine that similar to plastic surgery that when you go down that road of well, the only right, solution. Exacibate the, uh, yeah, the insecurity. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to cure that insecurity. Have you found that with your with your audience, or? A very very small amount of guys. Yeah. Like I have had a couple of guys contact me about it, and I just I advi I personally advise them against it because it just don't it's it's just so unnecessary to me. I just once guys see the results that they can get with whatever they're working with, I feel that that insecurity goes away for the vast majority of them. And yeah, yeah. I do think if you are st suffering with that insecurity, the best thing you could do would be to quit porn. Just, mm. just don't watch it if you if you have any sort of insecurity in that way. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm reading a book right now on happiness, and it it talks a lot about status, uh, mm -hmm. particularly Which with book? men. Um, Happily ever after, or something, some, something like that. Okay, I, I don't know that. Uh, I don't know. I'm not good with words, but um, I'll message you after. It's a really good book for like forgetting about going on the, the hamster wheel and trying to like just get more money and more status just for the sake of more money and more status. Right. Um, but it talks about how we often put us, we're constantly looking for where we are in the pecking order yeah. on different things. So for instance, if I buy a house and none of my friends have houses, I feel incredibly happy. My testosterone goes through the roof, my status, right, right. all of this stuff. And then as soon as one of my friends gets a house, I'm like, you fucking cunt. And you know, <laughs> on the surface, I'm like, oh, congratulations, I'm so happy, you know. But the subconscious is like, now you need another house. Um, right. And there's other stuff around that, like, for women, having more empty rooms does nothing for them. But men, oh, I heard about this the other day. Yeah. yeah, 
Uh, yeah, the so more empty rooms man. they have in their house, the more testosterone they have and the happier <laughs> they are and the more status they perceive themselves to have. So I wonder with this stuff, like when you're constantly watching porn, are you just telling yourself, you know, because most right. guys, porn, uh, people that get into porn are selected purely because yeah. they're yeah, yeah. at the far right end of the bell curve, right? Yeah, and you're watching yeah. them, and you're not looking at anyone else's dick. You're not like checking the guy on the bus or anything like that. It's yeah, just, yeah. just these porn stars. So all you're seeing is, I have the smallest dick in the world. I have the smallest dick in the world. Yeah, uh, that must be fucking pretty brutal. So yeah, I think even from that perspective of like realizing that we're status animals and that that's what we run off of. Uh, not watching porn or if you are going to watch it maybe just watch porn with just girls in it uh yeah. it's probably yeah. a better thing to do yeah. yeah i would say like it would be nice if we could get over that status thinking and um um sort of just be happy with what you have and be appreciative but realistically there's only so much you can do in that direction and 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 those are like built-in mechanisms into our brain one thing one good thing i would say is that as we discussed at the beginning most guys have such an ego surrounding sex that if you do put a small amount of effort into improving in that area, you can be the top of the pile quite easily mm. and satisfy that uh, need for status that your brain wants and give yourself a little hierarchy boost. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the cool thing is that in a, in a field, we'll call it, in which no one is training, right. if you... All you have to do is train a little bit and, and you beat yeah. the competition. Uh, that's a pretty cool thing. Um, all right, well, do you want to plug your website again just so it's in the front of people's minds? Yeah, yeah, no problem. So they can sign up and get those um, free uh, six videos by going to www.donofdesire.com forward slash good guys. Awesome. All right, thank you so much, Charles. Uh, would much. absolutely love to have you on again sometime for, for awesome. no fab or for something else. Um, yeah. Let's talk soon. Yeah, awesome. Right. Awesome. Thank you, man. Lovely, lovely to meet you. Right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.